Canada. It's my, it's my theory that I tend to prove in my new book, which I'm still writing. Um, I ended up, uh, it started when Ignatia parachuted into my South Etobicoke riding, and, uh, and he wanted to become Prime Minister. He was kind of anointed as the head of the Liberal Party of Canada. Then he wanted to be Prime Minister, and he hadn't been in Canada for 32 years. So what I did was uh, systematically uh, um, track his, his movements and all this stuff. You guys, you guys play video games? I was using Twitter to play political games. And, uh, and I, I didn't want to have any game over. You know, the, Twitter, the Twitter trial was them attempting to give me a game over. So, so I really enjoyed it over the, over the elections and everything. And uh, I met, I, I, whenever we went to a hockey game, I had a template on Twitter, a tweet that said, Hey, Nadia, if you're not really a hashtag hockey team fan, if you've never been to a hashtag other name for the hockey team in 32 years, right? <laughs> then hashtag NHL, hashtag hockey, hashtag Canada. And so, and, we, and then while he was there, I would hit it every 15 minutes, every 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> and to the point where uh, months later, he walked into the Hershey Center, which is a, a small community uh, uh, arena, 5,000 seat arena. And uh, he got booed when he when he <laughs> <laughs> so, so at that point I know, hey Twitter, you can really use this for you know this political game, you know. And they ended up going to third place in that election. So my my concept, my theory is that um, I wasn't I wasn't arrested because of uh, interacting with feminists or, or calling out feminists for for what they're doing. I think I I was set up by political entities. Because um, I, I design logos for free for good causes, I've been doing it for my whole career. Working nights and, and giving logos to tree planting companies and, and children's gardens and whatever, right? Any good political cause. And uh, so they, they ended up on Twitter uh, following the Toronto, Toronto Poly thread, hashtag Teal Poly. And across comes uh, Steph Guthrie and she's saying, you know, am I right folks? Uh, does anyone want to design a logo for my women in Toronto politics? And I saw it and I was sure, right? It sounds like women in Toronto politics. That sounds like a great idea, right? Um, unbeknownst to me, this was uh, probably it was probably a setup, right? Because they knew that they wanted to get Trudeau in as prime minister. They knew if I was on Twitter and I took out Ignati, if I'd probably take Trudeau out <laughs> aggressively. And so I think that's that's what happened. And the more we dug into it. For my trial, um, my lawyer, my lawyer only presented about ten percent of the dirt we got on everybody. Because these people on Twitter, they live for the, the the hour. Like if it's yesterday, it's old news, including all their old tweets. So a lot of these people didn't delete their tweets until it was too late because we gathered them all, put them in boxes on on Guthrie and on Lady Snark's lot and on, on uh, uh, Casey Ray. Yeah. So these and these three people were all connected all working together. Um, one of them was connected to the Attorney General's office, which is part in the part, the people that created Women in Toronto Politics were my chief complainant, Steph Guthrie, and Jessica Spence, who is working in the Ontario General, Attorney General's office. Paisley Ray, two years before my arrest, was working with uh, a new division of Toronto Police, which were the, um, she was teaching them how to do social media, how to enforce social media. Now that's not just happening in Toronto. Um, hashtag SmileCon is um, social media, internet law enforcement um, conventions, and your taxpayers pay for all these cops to go around. And I go, <laughs> they, and, and they, but they are all creating crime because our our crime rates. Everyone's looking at their phone now. You know, everyone's addicted, they've given up heroin and alcohol fights. <laughs> so, 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 so the crime rate's going like this, and these are all unionized, unionized uh, public servants with guns. So they're all looking, how can we create more crime? So, so one of the complainants is teaching the police how to find crime or create crime. And I was going to be a patsy for them, because it was going to set precedent. And then I was also going to be silenced and taken off the internet long enough to get the Trudeau in. And I think Lady Snarslot was just, she had like 300, 400,000 tweets. I think she was just addicted and she just wanted to cause shit on Twitter. <laughs> well, she, she had a lot. Man, she's up around 600 or something now. Well, I just found out, I just found out from Greg tonight, 
news about Steph Guthrie. She is now in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> 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 I hope a cassowary mauls her. <laughs> I feel bad for the cannibals who, who, who will eat her later. Yeah, they probably spit her out. Just <laughs> it's very bitter meat. Yeah, so this game. is this is like it's just it's very so complex. <laughs> <laughs> started as, you know, 60 people and how Guthrie was connected to them and they were connected to them. But every week we'd go back there when he was building it and we'd get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it really explains how, uh, how our system is uh, operating or corrupting or whatever you want to apply it as. I think it, I think it just shows uh, nepotism, it shows uh, cronyism, it's just, just all the worst things you can imagine. And it's not just Hillary in the States, it's where we have it with with the Trudeaus and everybody up here. Um, and I think that's that's probably why I don't play video games, is because I find that <laughs> politics is, is more than enough of a game. You get online with it and you start digging and then you all you have to do is start just revealing revealing like you know, you guys said this, you know, you guys did this. Here's a picture of you guys with the police, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drinking with the police, all this stuff. And it's uh, it's damning on the stand, and that's that's was the, the real joy. I mean, it was exhausting digging into all this stuff, um, bothering my four sons and their friends and family, um, and finding out who's who's how are these people all connected. And when you find out they're all connected, and like like our media, everything, they're all connected. <laughs> it's just mind blowing. Um, but Greg has this relationship map that is is it, it proves it all. And uh, it's, it's ongoing, isn't it? I've been doing that one for a while, making others. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you're covering Jordan B. Peterson. Yeah, which is now the most popular uh, story on your site. Yes, you be. I'll be number two to him. Um, and then there's a second one that's that's hitting right now on your site. What is that one? Oh, it's Alberta NDP. That was, that was a while ago. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, the Alberta NDP when they won the election. Uh, the uh, two hours after they won, they erased all their profiles up in their web page. Uh, oh, oh, oh. All their political problems got, you know. <laughs> so I found the list and Sorry. got all the caches and put all the links out, and it was uh, 1.2 million people read that story. And <clears throat> it was their first embarrassment, so I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> now just be at G Renault on Twitter. Is that, is that for the NDP party? For any party. Oh. <laughs> I thought with the NDP party you'd go with uh, alphabetically and start off with Andrea Horvath. <laughs> Work your way down. I go after all parties. My, my first political activity in Canada, I set up a protest. I, I was one of the organizers of Occupy Vancouver. I set up Occupy Harper. And Christy, uh, the uh, premier, they're having a photo up. And uh, I brought 200 people over and we blockaded the United building. They, they drove and they did a secret trip. They drove around the back and they drove on a sidewalk. And you can't tell us to get off the fucking sidewalk. Pardon my language. And we blockaded Harper and building for an hour and a half. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've occupied uh, stuff too happening right now. Um, I attended Occupy for the 30 days and just helped it anyway. Cause um, it's because it was super social. I mean, you had everyone from crazy street people all the way up to politicians all in one place. So, <laughs> being a political junkie and, you know, social uh, butterfly, and I just thought this place is great. But I talked to them uh, through Facebook, and I, I gave them an idea whether they're going to go through with it or not. I'm not sure. Uh, but I suggested the problem with Occupy five years ago in Toronto was that it was, it was static, it was in one place. and. And I said, well, here, here's what you guys could do. You could have Occupy Canada, and you start in Halifax in the spring, and you travel like a circus across Canada <laughs> to be to Vancouver in the fall, right? And, and then I said, they said, oh, that, that sounds feasible. And I went, like, well, this is great. <laughs> so I suggested they could also 
all of them could get passes for the national park because it's the 100th anniversary for Canada's national parks. And I said, you guys, for 120 bucks, you can stay at any national park. So now you can go to downtowns and towns and, and get down and dirty and political, and then you go swim in a park, and then you go in a couple of 20 miles over to another park and you swim and have fun, and then you, you know, and if and if uh, any of your people in the caravan have to head east again, they just befriend some people with a motor home and you know beg a ride back to wherever they go. I mean, this 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 will work, you know. So if it happens, it'll be kind of funny, <laughs> you know. I'm mean, I'm kind of like extreme left and extreme right as far as politics. It's, it's that, that liberal middle that they just won't step in. You know? That's good. <laughs> it's shit show. But yeah, um, the, the Twitter trial, I'm, 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 I started the book and I realize I'm not an author. So I'm, right now I'm devising a, a way to just chronologically take all the tweets and use that as a, as a framework. framework. Build it up, build it up all through the pages until I get all the important pertinent information. And then just write to it. And that way anything I say can't be questioned or I can't be sued for it because I'm writing to reality. And uh, half the people will be surprised that, that we got their tweets before they had to delete them all. <laughs> I was also told by someone, if I ever get in, in a situation like this again, um, contact uh, uh, 4chan or 8chan immediately. <laughs> yes, yes. So if you're ever in a tough spot, you know, say nothing to the police, get a lawyer, and then and then get 4chan or 8chan immediately because they will get everything you need to know. World's best hackers. Hindsight's funny, it's funny, right? But that's why I'm sharing this. That's the most important thing. I mean, you have to because these people. Um, Another thing they tried in my trial, which is another trick that they, they, they use, is uh, they'll actually um, try to get a press ban on the trial so their identities won't be revealed so they can destroy other people's lives. And in this case, they tried it. You know, some tweet, threatening tweet to Guthrie from Chile the day before. They used that and they held that up. Oh, see, the legs are in danger. My guess is that one of their friends sent it. They you know, yeah. sent it through, you know, who knows how many filters. But uh, this is what they do. And, and they, they, I saw more than enough instances where they were asking people, can you please delete this, delete it from your Storify and all this stuff. They don't want to be known. So the more you dig, dig them up, bring them out, verify them, you know, and. It's the only way to, to stop. You know. What? Sorry, can they can they actually ask you to like not be on there because it's already like the tweet was already in public domain. Well, no, they can try, and the fact that they haven't asked shows how crazy they are. <laughs> you know, like like can you like this is what happened uh, on the stand. Um, Guthrie was saying like um, we can say whatever we want about Greg, but Greg can't respond to us. You know, and then they try to. They're, they're, they're still trying, I know this is everywhere, you know, in Britain and everywhere, they're trying to suggest that the internet is their workspace, so if they can get someone to agree to that legally, then they can say workplace rules apply. Like, they'll, <laughs> I don't, I'm surprised you guys are surprised by me saying this. Yeah. They, they, are, they try to find every way to do damage to their political opponents and try and profit from it, more Twitter followers, uh, more speaking engagements, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it, it's it's a so many people are professional professional victims. Victims. There's no other Cry bullies. Cry bullies. Cry bullies. But no, but some of them are not only do they turn it into a, a money making thing, but then it becomes they become politically. Oh, well, that's just another thing. Is is that while the cry bully is crying, they've already told their friend who's the reporter to follow it, or the reporters, because they'll, Metro, Metro and, and all that stuff, Jasmine Cole will be on. Get the cameras, get the scene. Well, no, but they'll, they'll find something to protest, but then they have the exclusive give it to all their friends, because nowadays, uh, a lot of professional reporters and journalists, they can't get the scoop quick enough, because someone, some, a plane crashes, someone pulls out their phone, it's on there, by the time the reporters are paid and professionals, right, by the time they show up, the, Fires out, and, you know, <laughs> planes have gone, people are buried, you know. So that's what they're up against. So they've actually tried, they, they've tried to redesign the system to fix all the things that, that the internet broke. 
um, they broke all their power. Um, that's why we're seeing uh, Trump as president, because the WikiLeaks and all that stuff, everything, this, this hiding of, of all the truths and spinning the news into all the lies and the narrative, it's, it's, it's insane what they do. But they, they, they're really good at it. It's just that the internet kind of threw a stick in their spokes. And uh, they're trying to pull that stick out, and I think it's our job to keep putting more sticks in. <laughs> Maybe like take the tires off the bike, and, you know, recycle the frame or something. Yeah, something I saw when I was, when I was a kid, I was a hacker. I used to break into computer systems and read, download files on how to make your own bombs and how to make explosives and how to do all this great stuff. That information wasn't available. I grew up in Victoria when I was well in those in those years. And Victoria, if I wanted to get information that was alternative, I'd get on a ferry and a bus and a ferry and a bus and I'd go downtown Vancouver and I'd go find an alternative bookstore and buy the uh, anarchist cookbook. And the anarchist cookbook was that was it, that was the shit. But now with the internet, it's there and everyone has it. We, if you wanted to know how to do these things, you'd have to have a special access to a dial up bulletin board in California and you have to someone let you in and then you download the files and you share them and now all of a sudden, boom. Yeah, the problem is that they all, Snowden revealed that everything you're doing and downloading is all being recorded, every telephone conversation. So um, one of the things that saved my ass during the Twitter trial was that knowing that I was going up against politicians, and knowing that half of them are, are lawyers to begin with, and then they get, they get bored of corrupting the legal system and, and, that, and they decide, let's corrupt politics. Um, more profitable. But uh, after they, they uh, when I was picking fights with the liberals and such in Canada, uh, I realized that half of them are lawyers, so I, did, I watched every word I used. Like, no, no slander, no libel, no anything. So when I was in jail and talking to my, in the holding cells at the courthouse, I'm talking to the inch that glassed my lawyer, and he goes, okay, you've got 50,000 tweets. Which ones do we have to worry about? And I just looked at him with none. <laughs> and he smiles, he goes, come on, 50,000 tweets. You know, you're in jail, something happened, right? Well, not one, man. I watched every syllable. Every every letter has been placed carefully, you know? And it proved to be the case. I mean, over time, my lawyer started to believe me, you know? Um, a lot of things I was accused of, um, you know, he hounded her, and he hounded her, and he had hundreds of tweets and everything. And, and it wasn't the case. What they'd done is they had to create the narrative. And because they were picking fights with me, and I was responding, you know, like, Fuck you, and I say, well, that, right? <laughs> but and then one of their friends did, so they like that. So well, I just created 10, 10 tweets, so they can do that for a couple of months, and there's thousands of tweets. Even though they're weird, I, I actually crunched the numbers. I took all the, I didn't give my lawyer everything, right? so I crunched all the numbers. I said, okay, I made from when I first interacted in early April to when I was arrested in November, two thousand and twelve. I counted all the tweets. <laughs> I counted them all. And I was doing 300 tweets a day, so there's a lot to count. But then I took the evidence and, and counted the evidence from the Guthrie uh, mentions, and then the Ray mentions, and then the um, Lady Snarks a lot, Riley ones. Counted them up, and they were less than 1%. Like they were 0.6% of my, 0.4% of my tweet stream. So they're sitting there saying, oh, he was. He was obsessed with us. Not really. You know? They ended up pulling the third complainant that was in tight with, uh, with Toronto Police Services um, because they knew we had been digging on all of them. They knew, so they actually didn't let her get up on the stand. The day she was supposed to take the stand, right? <laughs> I just want to be clear. The you day were, she was supposed to take the stand, they yeah. took her up. But we showed up with three or four boxes of all, five copies of all the tweets and evidence and such. Um, but they took her off because they didn't want that to get into public record. Um, I should be able to put it in the book because, as, as you guys were saying, it's it's public. tweeted, it's public. If you retract it, or it's too, it's all, too late. Right? All disclosure is going in the book. Yeah, and it's very yours. It's very yours. Yeah, yeah, the book's going to be a lot thick. I, I probably read a book that so thick I would never read it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it gets thick. Like, I think, uh, what, War and Peace? I, I know the first Twi line. Tweet are... Peace. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was on Twitter. You know, it's like, you know. Uh, I, I'd like to just kind of ask uh, a couple things. Um, 
and make out. Well, I'll ask a couple questions. First, who's that Who's that wonderful lawyer gentleman there that uh, represents Chris represented Murphy? Him? There you go. Chris Let's Murphy, get that yeah. on record. Yeah, he's, uh, he represents uh, family and friends. So he's got a lot of Let's put that on record. <laughs> now, Craig, I was at the uh, verdict of your trial there, and uh, I, I paid attention quite a bit to what Guthrie was doing as, as the, the, the verdict was being read, read out. And the, the thing that stuck out in my mind was that all she did was sit there and pick her nails while you were facing going to jail with three hots and a cot for, you know, X amount of days or whatever they wanted to throw you in for. What does that kind of, in your mind and knowing Guthrie, what does that kind of indicate to you, her just sitting there picking her nails and not a care in the world? Um, I think she was bored because uh, the process, is, even though it's a legal process that's going to take time, and I think, I think anybody that's addicted to Twitter, which I believe all of them are, including I was, um, I think that uh, they live for the moment. And, and the concept of anything taken, they want instant gratification. And I, this, I think she was scared. Think so? I mean, here she is, she's this, made her whole, every newspaper Correct. has made her into this damsel in distress, except for my favorite and most trusted journalist, Christy Latchford. She, she was at first, she was turning to this hero. The way I met Greg, I'll just jump back a little bit. I helped start Occupy Vancouver. Now, I'm, I was a very left leaning person, although I worked in the corporate world most of my life, and I was sick and effing tired of the banks that I was working for and seeing the corruption. And then Occupy came along, and I thought, this is it. So us, a few of us went and started Occupy four weeks before we did this out of camp. And um, I then I met the radical left. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the right too? And was it a hook or was it an uppercut? Well, it, 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 the first thing that happened was this person posted on our Facebook page a video of violence during the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. It was a black bloc kids, the kids with the masks over their faces in the black, smashing up things. And there was this woman whose name was Harsha Walia, who's one of the lead SJWs in Vancouver. And she was being in a debate after the violence, where she was saying, I stand up for these people. I wasn't one of them, but they're doing the right thing. They're changing the world. We need to back them. And, she, and the guy who was against her, which I'm not sure, it may have been a setup, but she, he said, but, 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 she said, cut your white privilege. So she, and this is the first time I heard white privilege. <laughs> but because he's white, he can't talk to her because he's this Indian man about violence. <laughs> but then, and I started complaining right then and there. There's this, Young woman, uh, you may have seen her actually, and she's part of the kind of part of the problem. It is Ms. Rice, a few years ago, our what's favorite Ms. Rice, okay. our favorite journalist in the Toronto Star, uh, Antonia Zavisis, wrote an article about her as the most tweeted, the most followed tweeter in political tweeter in Canada. Yeah. But she went and said, "What's this violence?" And I said, "What's this violence?" And I stood up for her, and all of a sudden, I was dog piled, and I was attacked by these anarchists and left-wing activists who believe that violence was important. And I fought this in Occupy, and even before we opened up the camp, I wrote articles, uh, that's why I started, the reason I started writing was to share my ideas, and I said, yeah, we can't have violence, how are we going to change the world with that? I, I lived in East Europe after the wall fell, I saw the revolutions that happened in Germany and Hungary and Romania and Czech and Slovakia, I was in the Velvet Revolution. In Czech, where they all sat down together, had beers, and Czech and Slovakia, and they went, cheers, we're two countries. It was wonderful. And then in, in Romania, they took Ceausescu and they hung them on live on TV and shot them. And if you look at which country is doing well, it's not Romania. I mean, it's a shithole. <laughs> and so I, I made this argument, and I got in fights with the social justice warriors, which I didn't know what that was. And, and I, that argument went on for a while. Uh, long before Greg was taken down on Twitter. <laughs> hey, I, I, they called me an MRA. I had to look it up. And I'd just like to finish uh, off here. Okay. Just gonna, and I'd like to apply this to you both. Both right. Greg's, Greg squared there. All right. Um, yeah, really. <laughs> G2, right? Um, G2 something. Um, and this is G2, kind of... right there. This is... Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 And kind of in, this is kind of in general about Twitter, and I know that uh, Greg Renup, you're well aware of this, but what do you think about Twitter organizing a 
uh, a, a, no, a talk or a lecture about for only feminist social justice warrior reporters to attend and kind of giving them tricks of the trade or tricks in internal tricks of Twitter. Well, that what do you think? Yeah, that happened.